Hello, everyone. This is the Catholic Esquire checking in with you again. Please check out my website, catholicesquire.org. The topic of today's video is Nova Sordo Funerals, and I entitled it A Parade of Horribles because that's exactly what it is. Now, this comes to my mind because I've recently attended Nova Sordo Funerals. I've certainly attended many over the course of my lifetime consistently almost across the board, at least in my experience and the experience of others I've talked to, these Nova Sordo funerals are conducted pretty much the same. If you've actually attended Nova Sordo funeral where the priest does a, a, a good job as far as making sure the, the, the people there understand the purpose of the funeral, uh, making people there understand that it's important to pray for the souls of the deceased. That's great. Great for you. But generally speaking, the reality is, is that most Nova Soto funerals are nothing more than canonizations, canonizations of the deceased. The reason why you're at the funeral. So what am I talking about here? I, I think we, if you've been to a Nova Soto funeral, you know what I'm talking about, but it's good to sometimes articulate these things so we can better understand what the problem is with it. And to the extent we can try to educate our friends and families as to the problems with it. You'll notice at a typical Nova Soto funeral that the priest doesn't wear black vestments. Uh, they used to wear black vestments traditionally uh, in traditional Latin masses. They'll typically wear black. The ones I've been to, the priest is wearing white. Well, why is that? Because at the Novus Ordo Mass, these priests are telling people that the deceased, the person that's died, is in heaven. And that's why I say they're canonization processes, because they're they're declaring the person that you're at the funeral for already in heaven. Now, the last funeral I attended, the priest said it four different times. And to make matters worse, they also canonize everybody else that the person there knew. So Sally Jane Smith passes away, you're at the funeral for Sally. The priest is going to say, oh, now Sally's with her husband, John and her parents. Oh, really? So now the priest is telling you that Sally, the person you're there for the funeral for, is in heaven. Her husband's in heaven. Her parents are in heaven. And when Sally's, now that Sally's gone, she's in heaven and they're having a big party in heaven, a big reunion. How many funerals have you been to where the priest talks like that? Again, in my experience, that's almost every Nova Soro funeral I attended, and at least in the last five to ten years. That's what the priests are saying. That is a real problem. And this is an outgrowth of modernism, the heresy of modernism. And if you watch my videos, you know I keep coming back to this. You're going to get tired of it. But I can't get this point across enough. The problem in the church today, the ultimate problem is a heresy. It's the heresy of modernism. And as some other people pointed out in comments and prior videos, well, modernism isn't a great term for this. It's kind of confusing to people. I agree. But that's the term Pope Pius X, St. Pope Pius X used. And it has a meaning. It has a definition. And that's the one I'm going to use. I'm just going to use that term, modernism. That's what we're dealing with here. It is a heresy. Probably the biggest and most poisonous heresy that the church has ever faced in its history. And it infects, it seeps into like a noxious gas, every little corner of the church. And this is really evident with Novus Ordo funerals. You see, modernism is about the faith. It's a heresy. It's, it's, it's a misunderstanding of what the faith is. It, modernism in, is really uh, a byproduct of a desire to accommodate the church to the ways of the world, to the ways of the modern world. It's disguised using terms such as ecumenism, 
Uh, that's a typical one that they use. Um, sometimes you'll hear other catchphrases like accompaniment and these other things. But really all it is is a way to accommodate, change the church's teaching to conform with the expectations of the modern culture, which we all know is right now diabolically influenced. So you can understand why this is a problem. Now, going back to the Novus Ordo funeral, what's the problem here? Well, the priest is telling everybody that the deceased is in heaven, not even purgatory, right? I don't think it's wrong to assume that the person who died is in a state of grace. We may, most of the time, we really don't know, do we? Now, just in case you're new to the faith and you don't understand what I'm talking about here, it's Catholic teaching, dogma, that at the time of death, the person faces their particular judgment Jesus before Jesus Christ. And you are either condemned to hell, or if you die in a state of grace, uh, you eventually will be admitted to the kingdom of heaven and the beatific vision. But the reality is, is that those who die in a state of grace also have this temporal sin on their souls that need to be purified. And I, that's going to require another whole video to discuss this. But the point being is that if you die in a state of grace, most likely your family and friends are in purgatory. Okay. And in order to be relieved from purgatory, which consists of much suffering, um, and, and it's not a place you want to be. It's not a place you want to be. In order to be relieved from the pains of purgatory, that purgatorial fire, we can help those, those poor souls with, through our prayers. And one of the most important prayers is done at the Mass. And at the funeral Mass, it's very important we want to pray for the repose of the soul of the person who's deceased. Now, let me ask you this. If the priest tells you that the person who died is already in heaven, why would I pray for that person? You don't need to pray for people already in heaven. I don't need to pray for St. Uh, let's say Saint Thomas Aquinas. I don't need to pray for the repose of his soul because the church has already declared him to be in heaven through the canonization process. But see, the people we know, our friends and family, chances are they're not canonized, now are they? Which means we don't know if they're in heaven, which means the safe bet is to assume they're in purgatory. If you pray for the repose of the soul of someone who's already in heaven, don't worry, it's not wasted. It's not wasted. God can use those prayers and apply them to other people who are in purgatory who need them. That's fine. But what you should not do is not pray for the repose of the souls of people who have died. Not only is that is that reckless, it's extremely uncharitable. Why would you not pray for the souls of these people? Now, maybe at these masses, they do say prayers for the souls of the deceased, but that's inconsistent with the attitude of the priest that if not explicitly, implicitly indicates that the person's already in heaven. So when we wear white vestments, when we laugh and we joke and we act like it's a big party or a celebration of life, no, that is not Catholic. We want to pray for the pose of the soul that is deceased. It's a very serious matter to get that person out of purgatory. Now, it's okay to celebrate the life of people, but not, not in that context, not the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, where we should be directing our prayers to God and asking Him and praying for the repose of the souls of the people who are deceased. It is the right thing to do. It's the charitable thing to do. And it's what our duty, it really, is family and friends. It's our duty to be doing that. 
So to have priests, to have priests come out and tell everybody that shows up that that person is already in heaven. No, that's not, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's uncharitable and it, and it misleads people in the faith. It's dangerous to the faith. Why? Because it's not teaching people about the, the dogma of purgatory. It's not teaching people about that. I guarantee you, if you go to a typical Novus Ordo parish today and you ask them, pull them, pull the people, please tell me what an indulgence is and what it's for. How many people do you think would answer those questions correctly? I'm guessing about 10% at, at best. Okay. Well, indulgences are connected directly to the fact that souls, when they die, if they die in a state of grace, most likely will be in purgatory, including your own. And, and so you can see that by, by, by misleading people at funeral masses, you're misleading people about the faith. You're misleading people about the doctrine of purgatory. This is why this is such an important topic. This is why this is a perfect example of how modernism is corrupting the church. The new mass is corrupting people's faith. It's a danger to the faith. And anyone who's attended a Novus Ordo mass, funeral mass, can see that. It's right there in plain, plain day. And you know what also I've noticed about it too? It's very bizarre. I don't know. Maybe other people noticed it too. But the priests, the priests are really, really hell bent on this, on making sure that everybody there is in a happy, joyous mood and, and really go out of their way to lead people to believe their family and friends are in heaven. Why are they doing that? They should be going out of their way to make sure the family and friends are praying for the repose of the soul of that person. Now, I'm going to tell you why they don't do that, because they are afraid of what the family members and friends will say about them if they in any way imply that their mother, their brother, their family is not in heaven. They are afraid of the backlash. They're cowards. That's why. Now, if you think that these priests, uh, if you think these priests are afraid to tell family and friends that they should pray for the souls of their, uh, uh, of their, of their deceased loved one, because they might not be in heaven. If you think they're afraid to do that, do you think they're afraid to tell people they shouldn't contracept? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're afraid of that too. You see, the truth isn't being taught at these masses. The truth isn't being taught in sermons. The truth isn't being taught in the way these masses are being celebrated and conducted. The exact opposite is. And that's the problem with the new mass, my friends. And this is why we need to stick to tradition and the traditional Latin mass. We need to share this information with our families and friends. If we can get, get, get a funeral, uh, get, get a requiem mass, um, in a traditional parish, if you can, if at all possible. But even if out of charity, you have to attend the Novus Ordo funeral masses, at least when you talk to your family and friends, make it very clear that you're there to pray for the repose of the soul of the deceased. And, it, you know, and explain to them why. It's okay. You know, uh, 500 years ago, back in the Middle Ages, this wouldn't have even been an issue. Everybody knew this stuff. That's because the Catholics back in the Middle Ages knew their faith 10 times better than Catholics today know their faith. That is a scandal and outrage. And yeah, Vatican II and the consequences of Vatican II all have something to do with that. So this is a perfect opportunity to teach the truth, to push back against lies and errors and heresy in a charitable, prudent way. I hope this video helped. If you think it's useful to others to hear, please share it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Have a good day. God bless.